Next, I would like to talk about rulers. Rulers are on by default and are visible at the top of the document window and the left side. The units the rulers are in are your default units in your document. If you're working in a document and you do not see the rulers, you need to make sure that they are turned on. We can come over to the view menu, come down and make sure the checkbox is checked next to the rulers. If it's not, check it on. And if you have the rulers on and you'd like to turn them off, just unclick that check mark and the rulers will go away. By default, I usually leave the rulers on. They can be helpful. Next, I would like to talk about guidelines. Guidelines are a powerful alignment tool. The way that we use guidelines is that we can go into the ruler and we can click and hold and drag a guideline over. So if we want a vertical guideline, we go to the left hand side and we can release it. If we want a horizontal, we go up to the top, click and drag down, and we have another guideline. We can move those guidelines around by hovering over them. We get an arrow. We can move them up and down. We can move them side to side. One nice thing that we can do with our guidelines is we can precisely locate them. And in this case, all you need to do is highlight the guideline that you're interested in. And up in the top property bar, it has a dimension. We can go in and modify this dimension to move it to exactly where we want that to be. In this case, I've moved this guideline to exactly four inches. I can do the same thing with my horizontal guideline by clicking on it, highlighting it, and then I can change my dimension. Let's say I want to move this to nine. Now that we have guidelines on the screen, we want to be able to use them. And to be able to use them, we need to make sure that we're going to snap to them. So we go over to our view menu, come down to snap to, and then we want to make sure that the check mark next to guidelines is checked. In this case, it's not, so we're going to click it on. Now we'll be able to snap to those guidelines. So in this case, I'm going to make a circle located right at our two guidelines. As you can see, as I get close to the guideline, it snaps to it. So I can snap to these. And right at that, it shows the intersection. The intersection is where I want to start the circle. I can start making my circle, but I want the center right at the center. So I'll press Shift, and I want an exact circle. So I press my Control, and now I've got an exact circle right at that location. Release the mouse, and it puts it there. We can also delete our guidelines. If we no longer need them, we can then click on it and then press delete on the keyboard and we can delete that off the screen. Next, I would like to talk about grouping. Sometimes we'll create multiple objects on the screen. We'll want to be able to move them as a single object. I have two objects on the screen, one being my text and one being my box. If I wanted to work on these together or I wanted to move them to a different location, I would try to click on them. I could click on it and if I tried to move it, I would move one but not the other. So I would have to select both objects. In this case, I can drag a box around it and it would select both of my objects and then I can move those together. Now I may have other objects I'm working on on the screen. I click off of it and then all of a sudden now I go to try to move it again and I forget that I don't have them together and I need to go back. Best way to do this is just Control Z to undo, and then I have to select them again. Well, in this case, I only have two objects. I might have 50 objects that I want to have all grouped together, and going in and selecting them individually is sometimes difficult to do. We can use something called grouping. And in this case, if we drag a box around both of our objects or all of the objects that we would like to group together, we can then hover until we get an arrow or a blue text, right click, We can hit group objects and that will group those objects together. Now, when I go to click on it, I don't need to select all of them. They're already all grouped together. Now, the shortcut for grouping is, is control G. So you can hit control G and group it. Now, let's say you want to break these apart. You don't want them grouped together anymore. You can click on your group, hover over, right click, and then you can say ungroup objects. We can create groups that have groups in them. 
And if we want to ungroup everything so there's no more groups in our object at all, we can say ungroup all objects. Otherwise, you can just do ungroup objects, which will break them apart. And if they were in smaller groups, those smaller groups will still be maintained.